Welcome back to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm your host, Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. We're coming to you live from the Digital Asset Summit in New York City. Joining me for the segment, we have Mason Porter. He's the co-founder and CEO of Tokensoft. We're going to take a look at rebuilding financial services on the blockchain. Mason, it's great to have you here with us, and you are looking to create global accessibility for yep. financial services. Yep, that's right. Um, so uh, Tokensoft is a technology platform, and what we do is we help issuers of digital assets uh, issue their assets while remaining in compliance with banking, securities, and tax laws uh, globally. And so just by virtue of that, we've had to sort of build out the infrastructure on top of the blockchain that enables them to fit into the existing regulations um, as they look to issue their asset. All right, now institutional readiness, realistically, how many years out are we? I think realistically, um, if you asked me six months ago, I would have said we're about three to five years out because all we had were startups looking at the space and looking at building different pieces uh, of the financial fabric. But uh, now, as of the last six months, we're seeing a lot more institutional interest in the space. And we're seeing them build, uh, we have Fidelity Digital Assets building a custody platform. Uh, we have uh, just major institutions, DTCC, uh, starting to talk more about blockchain. Uh, we have Bank of America, they have about 79 patents, uh, or blockchain related patents out there. And so we're seeing a lot of interest and uh, with these institutionals comes uh, the proper licensing, uh, regulatory relationships, and really the financial backing they need to sort of build out these different uh, pieces a little bit more effectively and quickly. So now looking out, I think it's about six months to a year perhaps before the proper custody and clearing infrastructure exists for the space. All right, now for this to really take hold and get that true institutional adoption and get scale here, yeah. there's two big things that need to happen. Yep, yep. Um, so I think um, uh, for, for that to happen, one, one big piece that's missing is really uh, really custody. Um, and once, once custody exists, then um, it's really easy to sort of do what's the next layer up in creating accounts for people and to plug these um, digital assets into traditional venues like uh, E-Trade, TD Ameritrade, uh, where people are used to uh, retail investors are used to accessing their securities. Um, so I think once that happens, then uh, it'll be a little bit more accessible for, for people around the world. And what about synergy with regulations? Yeah, uh, so that's where, that's one of the hardest parts, I think. So really, uh, we started with just the blockchain before issuing the assets on the blockchain. Um, but there's also regulations, and so we've ha had to build a lot of technology that maps the blockchain to these regulations. Um, and so I think um, folks have really gotten comfortable with regulations the past year, um, but there's still a lot of technologies necessary that plugs into the regulations and the blockchain and sort of uh, maps that divide. Because one of the key challenges is the technology moves so fast, yeah, yeah. and it's tough for the regulators to keep up with it. And of course, you know, you, you had mentioned keeping it standardized and consistent globally. Yeah. Could also be a challenge. Yeah. So what we what we really do is uh, so our our clients are issuing assets in jurisdictions around the world. So the most jurisdictions where we've had to automate uh, the enforcement of, of securities laws is 56. And so we treat each of these jurisdictions uniquely. Mm -hmm. And so I think um, because we've had to build financial infrastructure with modern tooling, it's enabled us to automate a lot of these compliance requirements and a lot of this back office processing. Um, so I think what we're going to have moving forward is a very interconnected financial fabric where people around the world do have access to the same set of assets, again, that originate from different places around the world. Right, well, that's encouraging to hear. Thank yeah. you so much, Mason, for joining me. Thanks, and thanks for joining us on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Melantrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.